Welcome once more again. My name is Reverend Abel Dube, uh, giving you the power word from Power and Praise Ministries. Uh, we believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. We believe that Jesus Christ is our Lord, Lord and Savior. We believe in developing people and changing lives. And we're going to be giving you the word to develop you and change you. Because the scripture says the beginning of your journey uh, is the word that you have inside of you. Now, we're going to read uh, scriptures from Zechariah 4, verse 8 and 9. And the title of my message is Anointed to Start and Finish. Moreover, the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, The hands of Zerubbabel have laid the foundation of this house. His hands shall also finish it. And thou shalt know that the Lord of hosts has sent me unto you. When the Lord calls you to a vision, or when God calls us, or uh, uh, takes us to a place, or, 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 or and put a vision in our hearts, He gives us two things in our lives, which is called start and finish. When God takes you and puts you in a place, He puts you there to start and He puts you there to finish. When He puts a vision in your life, He puts a starting point and a finishing point. Glory to God. Now, the Lord clearly indicates through uh, the prophecy that the same hands that started the work are the same hands that will finish the work. It says the hands shall start it and the hands shall finish it. That means the same hands that started the foundation will complete the house. Amen. He takes you to start build the houses you are going to do the foundation. The same hands will do the foundation. And the same hands are going to roof the house. So it gives you uh, two things. The power to start and the power to finish. Now the choice of your hands is significant because it's very symbolic. The choice of hands is significant. You can choose your hands to be hanging, to hands to be in the pocket, or your hands to be on the plow. So the choice and the posture of your hands is very significant and is very symbolic. Hands represents three things. Number one, hands stands for work and action. With these hands, same hands, you will begin. With the same hands, you will finish. So, number one, Hands stands for work and action. Eyes stand for vision. Hands brings to pass things that are seen. So our eyes see things. The vision which Zerubbabel saw. The hands of Zerubbabel have laid the foundation of this house. And his hands shall finish it. He saw it in the vision, but the hands now are the ones which have to start things and the hands have to finish things. Hands are needed both to begin and complete the work. Number two, hands stand for personal commitment. Your vision will only be accomplished if you put your hands on it. You will not achieve your dreams if you fold your arms and expect others to use their own hands to fulfill or complete the work which you started. Your personal commitment and sacrifice to what you are doing is essential in the realization of your dream. That personal touch, that personal commitment, that work, you putting much work, your effort from your side is what is going to achieve and accomplish your personal commitment and sacrificing some things for the for the betterment of your work or for the uh, perfecting of your work. Number three, hand, hand stands for diligence. That means careful persistence, careful persistent work or effort. We are persistent. We are putting effort into this work. That is called hands. Best persistence. You need to persist until you achieve what you need to achieve. Now, in Proverbs 12, verse 24, it says, The hand of the diligent man shall rule, 
but the slothful, lazy man shall be under forced labor. A diligent man is very decisive, makes decisions, and when he makes decisions, he sticks to those decisions. He's very sharp and he's very active. If he makes wrong decisions, he's not afraid to change them because he's found something which is better. Very decisive. He's not stubborn. Decisiveness and being stubborn is two different things. This one is very decisive. Say, this is what we are going to achieve. We are going to build a factory. And he's going for the factory. And he's going to, first of all, go and get the person uh, uh, to draw the plan. And drawing the plan, he's going to get a, 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 a person to do the, the, the costing. How much the building is going to cost. And then after that, he's going to source the funds. And he's going to go to buy building material. He's going to get a builder and finish. He's very decisive and he's very focused. That's a diligent man. Very sharp and very active. He sets up a date for an examination. Say, so on this day, I'm writing my examination. That's a very decisive man. Can you imagine going to school and you don't know when you're going to write examinations? That would be tragic. Can you imagine living a life and you don't know what time you'll start work? You are working, but you don't know what time you start work. You're not a diligent man. A diligent man knows I start work at 7, 7 a.m. That means I've got to, by 4.30, 4 I must be up, I must be praying, and then after 30 minutes, I take my bath, and then I prepare, and then I come out of my house, I go to my work, quarter to seven, I'm arriving, seven o'clock, I'm starting to work. Very decisive man. A very diligent man. He put up a date for examination. Same example, you put up a date for wedding. Can you imagine? You go to a sister, and, or a woman, and you tell her you want to marry her. And she agreed, but you don't put a wedding day. Two years passes, three years, seven years, twelve. There are people who are living twelve years now together. Pastor, we've been here for twelve. What are you doing with a very undecisive man? Why? What are you doing with an, 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 a, a, a man who is not diligent? A man who is diligent sets up a date for wedding and say, Sister, I'm not going to waste your time. 14th of June. 2020, 2022, 2021, we are getting married. But a man who is not decisive will continue living as if there is no tomorrow. Just live and not even think about tomorrow. A man or woman who is diligent will get a cause that needs, that is needed to help him attain his dreams. Even in school, go online and do a course. That's a decisive man. That's a decisive man. A man who is not decisive, he knows all kind of soapies that are coming on TV. And you are a man. Sometimes, this, you know, the days we are living in, they are very interesting days. Men love soapies more than the women. I thought those things were designed for women. But the men love soapies. You see people are talking about, hey, yeah, hey, yeah, hey, yeah. Hey. You know what's happening on TV now? I mean, just watching people scratching each other. People fighting over a boyfriend and you are happy and you want to build a family. It doesn't work like that. A decisive man chooses what to feed himself with. A, decide, a diligent man chooses what kind of sport he watches, what kind of films he watches, what kind of movies he watches. That is a diligent man. A very decisive, sharp and active man or woman. He takes decisive actions to drop unfruitful habits. There must be unfruitful habits that are dropped. People of God, this world is ruthless. This world has no mercy over undecisive people. You have to make decisions and make de decisions and to stick to your decisions. Drop unfruitful habits and make some drastic changes in your lifestyle and the management of your time. You've got 24 hours a day. And with 24 hours a day, it looks like it's too much. Many people say they sleep for 8 hours a day. So we subtract 8 hours from 24. We remain with 16. 16 looks like it's too much. Now, what do you do in the next 16 hours when you are awake? 
You wake up, you spend 16 hours and you sleep again. You wake up, you spend 16 hours and sleep again. It doesn't work like that. Life is not kind to people like that. Life is not very kind to behaviors like that. Drop some uh, 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 habits, make drastic changes in your lifestyle and the management of your time. Now, a diligent man is self-motivated. He hardly needs any encouragement to work. That is a diligent man. Hardly needs any encouragement to wake up in the morning. Hardly needs any encouragement to, to go and, 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 and work for his family. Hardly needs any encouragement to read a book. Hardly needs any encouragement to start a course. He does not need anyone to encourage him because he's a very decisive person. He's self-motivated. The lazy man, on the other hand, is indecisive and unwilling to do what it takes. Now, his favorite phrase is, uh, 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 don't worry, uh, uh, uh. when he's confronted with opportunities, he says, no, don't worry, I'll do it tomorrow. No, no, it's already late now, let's do it tomorrow. Why can't you do it tomorrow? That's the favorite phrase of a lazy man. They will always do it tomorrow. He who observes the wind, says the Bible, shall never sow. If you observe the wind, if you observe the sky and say, ah, no, 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 I don't think, it. you will never sow. But a deceived person will go against the tide and you will sow his seed. You will sow on the ground and very soon there will be fruit. Interestingly, the lazy man, though he is lazy, he also works in spite of his laziness. The difference is he has to be whipped to work. All lazy people, they work. But unfortunately, they have to be whipped to work. They have to be whipped to work. Now, those who are going to dominate situations and get amazing results in life are those who are diligent in their work. We are in the 21st century times now. We are in the... Uh, I remember we were living in the like a global warming times. There was a lo lot of talk, but we're in the, in the COVID-19 times now. Everything is social distance. Everything is uh, 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 sanitized. Everything is done uh, with, with internet and things like that. Now, if you are lazy and you are not bettering your skills of life, You'll be left behind. And let me tell you, this world is very unkind. It moves with the times. So you have to wake up and move with the times. Even in business, begin to strategize and position your business for the times that are ahead. Position your church for times that are ahead. You are a diligent man. He who observes the wind will never sow. Glory to God. Now, the next thing which a, dom a, 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 a a diligent man does is he lays a good foundation. Now, four things that are important that are required for found at foundational level. Number one is a vision. You need to have a vision. Zerubbabel had a vision, so you need a vision in life. You need a picture, or have a picture of what you want to achieve. In your heart visualize it what do i want to achieve in my life how do i want my my family what kind of a family do i want to build what kind of a ministry do i want to build what kind of a home do i want to build what kind of a business do i want to build what kind of a business do i want to build and when you begin to do that vision will bring you to number two cost and cost benefit analysis any man seeking to finish, any man seeking to start, needs to count the cost. So you have to count the cost. What does it cost me to get there? Do I need to do a course? Do I need to pray more? Do I need to, 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 to look for somebody who knows it better to help me analyze the potential benefit of the project? And then it moves you to, to, to number three, which is planning. How you intend to execute your objectives. Without planning, the project is... is uh, 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 will fall apart. People who fail to plan, they plan to fail. So don't plan to fail in life. Because whichever way, even if you don't want to plan, because you are planning already, you don't want to plan to succeed, you are already planning to fail. People who fail to plan, they plan to fail. 
then it moves you now to the fourth part which is uh, courage it is boldly confronting the things you fear that will bring results boldly approaching boldly confronting things that you fear courage will make you start something in spite of your fears there are many dreamers but there are few starters everybody has a dream but there are few starters to be a starter it means you must be diligent you must be a decisive person you must have the anointing to start and you have the anointing to finish before you start the thing remains as a dream and dreamers are so many but there's few who are starters and if you want your dream to come to pass you must start many uh, 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 have visions and if they had started long time ago they would be far by now may you have the courage to take that first and most important step that you will usher you into places of your dream glory to god the other part of anointed to start and finish is beware of the lazy man it's not enough to lay a foundation you need to continue till you complete what you have begun proverbs 26 verse 15 says the lazy man buries his hands on his bosom it wearies it wearies him to bring it again to his mouth can you imagine a lazy man buries his hands in his bosom then when he has to eat he's so lazy to get the hand into the mouth that's what many people do that's what many of us do that is what laziness does you are weary to finish you start something but you can't you you, you start making a jersey you make it halfway you leave it you want to do a gardening you make it halfway you leave it you want to do this you leave it you want to wash a car you wash it halfway you leave it you want to start a job you go and work and then you run away when it's uh, two weeks before payday it says this work is too much it doesn't work like that finish the course glory to god that's the last thing that i'll mention you have to finish the course number one focus concentrating on all one's energies have a focus concentrate on one energies do an evening course do something at the expense of a cell phone just get rid of a cell phone and, and, and uh, expense your cell phone and do an evening course and that evening course will get you to where you are so that you can you are able to get a better phone now in a comfortable position and number uh, and b endurance marathon marathon is the best race shortest race fast race never get you anywhere you get there very tired but with the marathon you cover more ground you must have a focus do like you're running a marathon do like you're running a marathon that's endurance endurance patience and continuous application to get desired results second timothy 2 verse 3 says thou therefore endures hardness as a good soldier of jesus christ to endure means risking disgrace risking death and loss of dreams loss of your dreams you, you loss of uh, of sleep you are enjoying you are losing some of the most important uh, 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 things which you think they were important in your life because of endurance you are risking disgrace sometimes you look like you are being embarrassed for doing things going into the mud digging people might laugh at you you are enjoying and see is hope have hope and lastly, I will say, be determined. Have a determination. If I can't fly, I will run. If I can't run, I will walk. If I can't walk, I will crawl. Whatsoever it takes, I will drag myself across to the finishing line. That is determination. I will drag myself to the finishing line. This is what Paul had in mind when he wrote in Philippians 1 verse 6. says, I'm, I'm sure of this. That he who has begun a good work in you will bring it to completion in the day of Jesus Christ. May God, who has called you and who has called and who you serve, anoint you to start 
and continue to the finishing line. May God help you to start and finish in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. With these words, I would say go home and begin to start something. Begin to start in your dream. Your dream must not just end in the bed. Your dream must not end in paper. Put it down as a start and begin to start. Begin to apply your hands. Begin to work on your dream. And God, who started the good work, will bring it to completion in the day of Jesus Christ. My name is Reverend Abel Dube from Power and Praise Ministry, bringing you the power word uh, of today. God bless you as you continue to follow us, as you continue to follow this channel. God, may God uplift you. May your dreams come to pass, to fulfillment in Jesus' name. Amen.